Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on methods to properly record and manage freight in Design Manager. My name is Brad and I'll be hosting the demonstration. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane under go to webinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc. Design Manager INC for a complete listing of all sorts of topics, including quick start videos, short helpful tutorials, and our comprehensive webinars, which we've categorized into our project management and accounting courses, along with all of our weekly webinars, including today's discussion. Okay, in this week's webinar, we'll be reviewing many aspects of entering, tracking, and billing for freight. As freight is such an integral part of purchasing and therefore the design industry as a whole, it's important to have a clear, consistent method of recording freight charges and ultimately invoicing your client for the reimbursement of those charges. Also, although we'll be reviewing freight concepts, many of the functions we are discuss are going to be completely applicable to other component types, installation, labor, crating, and any other custom component type you may have implemented. Okay. Now again, one of the first and most important steps in properly handling freight is to have a clear notion of how you plan to ultimately invoice your client for the freight. And here at Design Manager, we've seen it done via many methods. Some firms want to include freight in the proposal. Some only want to invoice freight to the client after receiving the bills from the vendor. Others still want to charge freight as a percentage of the merchandise and many other ways. Let's first discuss a few methods for entering freight into Design Manager when you do want to include freight on the proposal to your client. Let's use the most common method of including the freight with its associated merchandise. To that end, let's quickly review some of the settings we can configure for freight on a per project basis. So let's go on our project tab under our management area to our projects window. And let's take a look at our Carter's Pennington home. We'll go to our defaults tab. And from here, we'll click our advanced markup, which gets us to our project advanced options uh, window for our Carter Pennington home. And here you can see we have our freight listed amongst the other component types. And we can see that we can mark up or price freight differently than our merchandise. In fact, we're charging a 10% uh, markup versus a 30% for our merchandise. Uh, we can see whether or not freight is taxable for this project. Now that actually comes from the sales tax code for the associated project. If we look at our sales tax glossary for our state of New Jersey. We can see here all of our tax rates and our taxable defaults. So those come over when we assign the sales tax code to the project itself. Whether or not to include freight in our deposit to the client on our proposal and the auto or automatic selection. We'll get to that uh, shortly. And all of these settings can actually be configured on a per pri uh, on a company-wide level. And to that end, we go to our file, company information and settings, click our advanced button here, and on our general tab, we can see all of the, uh, all of the same options here. So what we wanna do is configure our company advanced options so that uh, the vast majority of our projects will automatically be configured the way we want to, and then we can change them on a project by project basis if necessary. Okay, now let's hop over to our specifications for our Carter's Pennington home. And let's go ahead and add some freight to our items in our guest bedroom too. So item 17 here, let's take a look. Here is our armchair and we can go ahead. Now I could add freight as its own separate component. If I click the add button as indicated by the green plus sign, I could absolutely add freight as a separate component. But I like to rather edit our merchandise component itself and add freight as an associated component 
This way we know precisely which component the freight uh, for a particular item is going to be associated with, particularly if there's multiple merchandise components under a single item. And to add that associated freight on the main merchandise component, just go down to the freight and additional charges area and select freight. And when we do notice right away, we can see our markup percentage for the freight and whether or not it's been taxable coming right down from those project defaults as we just saw. So we can go ahead and put, let's say $80 of freight in. We mark it up, so we'll be charging the client $88 for the freight. And if we click OK, we're actually creating our second component, but as indicated by the freight for component one, design managers indicate that this freight is attached or associated with our uh, primary component, the armchair itself. Let's go ahead and add some freight to the other items in this location. Go on to our leather sofa. We'll add some freight here, let's say 175. We have our pillows. Let's say that's 50. We have our sleigh bed, a little bit more, 200. We have some fabric, 20. That's just great for our examples. So now I very quickly added freight to all of our, um, our existing items, and we can include those charges right on the proposal for our guest bedroom. So let's go over there. We'll close out a few of these windows. We'll go back to our project tab. Now we'll focus on our documents frame and click our proposals button. We'll select our Carter's Paint and Home project. And we can see we already have a few proposals, but let's make another one by clicking the Add button in the lower left corner. Now you can see the name default for the name of the project. I always like to change that to something a bit more indicative of what I'm proposing. How about guest bedroom with freight? Today's date is just fine. We'll use the modern format and keep our pictures. Let's sort this by reference number so our our items come right to the top and you can see here's our merchandise price and our freight price is listed separately for us. And when I go ahead and tag or select our armchair, we can see the merchandise going into the total price area while our freight is being conveniently subtotaled in its own area with the other additional charges along with sales tax and the total amount as well. We'll use our tag option here to select the rest of the items in the guest bedroom bedroom two and there we go and just by using our tag we can see they're all selected for us very quickly and conveniently if we click our ok button we'll get to our print preview window for our proposal and there it is and we can see each of our items and the freight is being summated in the totals region of the uh, proposal document but perhaps the client wants a bit more uh, clarity or um, exactly how the freight is being distributed or where the freight is going on a per, ice, per item basis. Well, we could do that too. Let's reject our proposal and right in the new proposal window, if we go to the remarks tab and click our advanced button here, we're actually going right to our project advanced options window on our proposal tab. And rather than totaling as our style of freight, we can select to list. And perhaps I even wanna change the title of freight uh, from freight to perhaps shipping on the document itself. Click okay. And okay again to regenerate our proposal. And now we can see rather than the freight being in the totals region, it's being quote unquote listed for each item. And I've even changed the title of freight to shipping just for aesthetics. So there's great transparency now of where the freight breakdown is on a per item basis. And let's reject one more time, because if you noticed back on our advanced options proposal tab, we have another selection for combined. Now this just takes 
the price of the freight and blends it with the merchandise. So rather than separating it out either in the total region or by listing it beneath each item individually, Combine is going to blend the $88, let's say for our armchair, right with the $650 for the, uh, for the merchandise itself. And now we can see there is our 738 as we would expect. So the freight is now combined or blended in to the entire merchandise price of the items themselves. And let's go ahead and accept that format. Remember, all of these options are in real time. So if you wanted to print the proposal with uh, having the freight totaling at the bottom and then changed your mind and wanted it to be list, you can just change the project and reprint and it'll automatically be updated for you. Okay, now, less commonly, but still uh, certainly happens from time to time, a firm may want to create just a single item to propose and or invoice uh, to the client for freight. This makes the management of freight very straightforward, at least from the perspective of the client. So let's jump back to our project specifications. Switch over to our Carter's Bring a Team Beach Home. Now we can see we have some items in our outdoor living area. Let's just make a, an item that represents the freight for all of those items. So all we have to do is just add an item as you would do for any merchandise. And let's call it uh, freight for outdoor living area. Location, of course, would be outdoor living area. Quantity and unit of measure doesn't really make sense in that case. Sales category, I've actually created a sales category just for freight. And if we look a little deeper, we can see that my freight sales category, I've configured all of my component types to point to my freight revenue and freight cost of goods sold account. So I could really select any component type, excluding time, of course, which would make that much sense in this case. And design manager will automatically handle the accounting for me, ensuring that my freight revenue and freight cost of goods are always being associated with the proper general ledger account. But I still may want to select freight as the component type so I have the control over it, how it's displayed on the proposal as we just saw. So we'll go ahead, add our component, change the component type from merchandise to freight, and we can see our markup changed from 30 to 10%. And let's just say an even $1,000 of cost, and we'll charge the client $1,100 for that freight. Click OK, and there we go. An item that just represents the freight for the outdoor living area. And if we go ahead and propose that, Go to our proposal window, Carter's Bring a Team Beach Home. Let's add. And let's change our name. Outdoor Living Area with Freight. Now, if we select our items for our merchandise, and our freight, in this case though, notice there's one difference. Even though my freight is being shown in the proper column, because it's its own item, it's being included in the total price rather than being separated as a associated component. Just the way it appears on the window for us to be able to determine. Click OK here. And now rather than having the freight uh, being summated in the totals region or uh, beneath each of the items individualized during the list format, we simply have an item that represents that freight as well. Now I could definitely uh, change the proposal style to uh, total and it would appear in the bottom if I wanted to. So just another way to handle freight, sort of as a bulk for the entire uh, location in this case. And we'll go ahead and accept that. Now we touched upon uh, many concepts regarding the proposal itself. So for more information on proposals in general, be sure to check out our webinar, Project Management Course One, Proposals, where we go into much greater detail on a lot of those topics and plenty others as well. Okay. Another method of managing freight is to add freight to each merchandise component 
calculated as a percentage of the price of the merchandise. Now, doing so prevents us from ever missing freight billings and distributes a uniform freight across the project so you can very accurately project your profit on freight. And here's how we configure this method. Let's go back to our projects window. We'll check out our Hilson Pocono home. Back to our defaults and advanced. Now here, notice a few changes from our Carter projects. Freight is now set for a pricing model of fee at 10%, and we're using this auto designation. The auto designation will tell design manager to automatically create one component of this type, in our case freight, for each merchandise component. So once I make my merchandise component, design manager is going to automatically, instantaneously make a freight component for it as well, really trying to prevent us from missing any freight billing to the client. So let's see how this works. Jump over to our specifications for the Hilsons, and let's add an item. Let's do side tables. Put that in the master bedroom. Let's do two each. Our sales category furniture is just fine. And we'll go ahead and add our component. And notice already, I have my merchandise component ready, but I also have Design Manager automatically creating that freight component for me using this specialized fee percentage, which we'll see in a second. So let's imagine that our, uh, our side tables are, oh, I don't know, perhaps 700. And when we input our cost, we calculate our price to the Hilsons for the side tables. But when we do so, the price defaults right down to the cost of the freight and we're marking, we're calculating a fee or a percentage of that cost as our freight. So we don't have any true cost with the freight, but we're going to charge the Hilsons 182. So we're putting a 10% freight calculation automatically. The costs will get handled, as we'll see shortly, when we actually put the bills in for, from the vendors. Now at this point, everything else is the exact same, making a proposal, et cetera. This is just a very convenient method to distribute a uniform freight across the project to ensure that it's never overlooked and Design Manager really does it automatically for you. Further, you can use some reporting tools that we'll discuss later to ensure that your freight percentage is accurately covering your freight expenses, and you can adjust that percentage over time. Very convenient method. Again, no cost, and there's our price of our freight. And there we go. Okay, so now we've discussed entering freight and showing on the proposal. Let's move on to including freight optionally on purchase orders, then actually entering some freight bills from the vendor. Freight components can be easily included on the purchase order, just like merchandise. And with freight as an associated component, as we've been doing, it's even easier. Let's take a look. Let's jump back to our Carter's Pennington Home Project. Oops. And jump down to our sofa. And you can see I've already added freight as an associated component. On the purchase order window, if we stay in our project tab and go back to our documents frame and go to our project POs, let's go ahead and add a new one. We can see here's our sofa and there's our associated freight right with it. Item 18, components one and two, and again, it shows freight for component one, so we know which item is associated with. So let's add, uh, let's make a PO for our sofa and some pillows. And when I select the sofa, notice by tagging the merchandise itself, the associated freight components automatically tagged for me. If I don't want to include it on the purchase order, no problem, just unselect it. But usually you might want to. And the same with our pillows automatically selecting the freight just by tagging the, uh, the pillows themselves. 
Okay, if we click OK, we'll get to our generate a purchase order window. Click OK again. And here we can see our sofa and our pillows. And in our totals region, there we have all of our freight being uh, summated at the bottom for us. And just like we uh, had options on how we want freight displayed with our proposal, we had the same with our, uh, with our purchase orders as well. So if we reject this guy, now click our advanced button on our purchase order window. We're back to our project advanced options window, but on our purchase order tab. And now we can change the style of freight from total to list. And here, the freight will be included right in the body of the purchase order for you. And same for the pillows. And there we go. Let's go ahead and accept that. Now, some firms want to enter freight in the specifications as we've done, but never want freight to show on the purchase order, particularly if the vendor from whom we are purchasing doesn't handle the shipping, but those duties are done by another company. So how will we do that? Let's jump back to our projects for our Carter Pennington home. And we'll go back to our advanced project, advanced options, purchase order. And we can see, let's change freight from list to ignore. Click OK. OK again. And now if we go to our purchase orders for our Carter Pennington home. Let's add another one. Now, here is our, first of all, notice there's no freight being listed at all. All of our component types are merchandise. And I know with our sleigh bed, I certainly have freight associated with it. But by setting it to ignore, Design Manager is not even showing it on our new purchase order window. And if we select our slave bed and create a PO, no freight whatsoever. And yet, back in our specifications, we can still see the freight listed there for us. So I can input the freight, have it recorded, so I can monitor it, et cetera, but the ignore setting is preventing it from ever being appearing on the purchase order. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change that back as I generally like to have my freight being shown. Let's go back to total. All set. Okay, now very commonly, the vendor from whom the merchandise was purchased may not know the freight at the time of ordering, or again, might not be the company doing so. In those cases, the freight estimate may come after the PO is created and probably way after the proposal has been created. And as such, you may want to um, indicate or update the client of those forthcoming expenses and regenerate the proposal showing the estimated freight. So let's jump back to our specifications. Let's go to our Carter's Bring a Team Beach Home. And let's take a look at our king bed. Let's imagine the vendor or the shipping company comes back and says, hey, I imagine this is going to be, oh, I don't know, $275 of freight. So as we've done before, to add freight as our associated component. And there we go. Now. Just by creating that component in there, which in fact, of course, changed the overall price of the um, of the uh, of the bed, our proposal is not reflecting that increase in price. To have that occur, as many of you know, we have to go over to our proposals and update it. And if we go ahead and there's our master bedroom, let's edit that proposal. And we can see now on our king bed, there's our original merchandise and we're including the freight. And you can see the total estimated amount is already increased. And if we click OK, we can regenerate our proposal 
There is our king bed. And now we have our, our freight included. Oops, let's do that. I have that set to combine. Let's reject that and make it a little bit more transparent to the client. Let's put that down at, how about lists? So they know exactly where the freight is going. There we go. Now we have our merchandise listed for the bed and the freight very clearly displayed to the client. Let's go ahead and accept. And now we can see our updated total proposed amount. Very important. Now we do not need to go back and edit the purchase order. The vendor has already provided the freight cost to us. I don't need to communicate that back to the vendor or to the shipping company. Only if your company requires that as an internal process do you need to do so. In fact, you don't even need to enter or edit the specifications at all to include the freight if you don't want to, as we'll see shortly. You only need to include late added freight if you want to communicate that back to your client or for future cost analysis for the project itself. We talked a lot about purchase orders and just like our proposals, if you want some more information on purchase orders in general, be sure to review our webinar project management course to purchase orders and work orders. And again, we go into great detail on many of these topics. Now at this point, we've been focusing on what we believe or presume what the freight will be or what the vendor has indicated as the forecasted freight cost. In design manager terms, this is the estimate cost of the freight. Conversely, the actual cost of the freight gets recorded when we enter the vendor invoice or the vendor bill for that freight. This concept of estimate versus actual freight will also come into play when we discuss invoicing the client for freight charges in a little bit. So let's go imagine that we have some bills to enter that include some freight. To do so, we jump off of our project tab and move over to our accounting tab, and we're gonna focus on our accounts payable frame and use our bills and invoices button to get to our vendor deposits, invoice, and operating expense window. This is where we enter any bills to the vendor. Let's click add. And let's enter a vendor invoice for one of our purchase orders from Legacy Antiques. Now I've selected this purchase order because I know I've already included freight on the purchase order itself. So let's go ahead and put in our Invoice number, today's date is just fine for the invoice date transaction description, entirely optional, but I highly recommend them as I need a little bit more information when I'm trying to research something I may have entered in uh, weeks or even years prior. And it could be something, uh, sofa, pillows, and freight. And now we can see the cost of our sofa, cost of our pillows, and our estimated freight costs. But perhaps that when we got the bill from Legacy, it wasn't uh, $175 for the freight of the sofa. Maybe it was 200. Well, we can absolutely make that adjustment simply by changing our freight line and updating the cost from 175 to 200. And when we do, the cost on invoice column for the freight increases appropriately while keeping our estimated or purchase order cost exactly what it originally was, the 175. So now we can compare and contrast that estimate versus the actual cost. Same for our pillows. Let's uh, update the freight here as well. And now that all of the amounts on the uh, vendor invoice window match the bill in my hand precisely, I could go ahead and record it. And there we go. Now, let's review. Let's go back to our purchase orders for our Carter Pennington home. And here's our original purchase order. We can see the freight is at the original 225. But if we look at our specifications, there's our sofa. Here's our freight. That's our original estimate, 175. 
But if we dig a bit deeper and go to our order status tab for the freight component, notice the actual cost is recorded at the correct 200. So again, we can track those differences for our cost analysis at the end of our project. And having the ability to do this, I mean, it's very extremely important when we're trying to review those project uh, cost analysis to, and to determine why at the end of the project or during the project, well, we may not have achieved our desired profitability by being able to enter an estimate cost versus actual cost, we can see on a per item basis where we may have achieved a lower markup or a greater markup than we had imagined. Okay, as I'm sure many of you know, oftentimes the bill for freight comes in much later than the bill for merchandise itself. That's completely acceptable and very common to have multiple vendor invoices for a single purchase order. So what happens if a bill arrives uh, for the shipping of the product much later than the bill for the merchandise itself? So back on our purchase orders for the Carter's Pennington home, let's take a peek at purchase order five here, Phil Jeffries. Well, we can see the original estimated total was 760. I sent a deposit of 360 uh, and another vendor invoice of 360. That's 720 by my math. So there's another $40 uh, remaining there. And if we look, the status window, we can see here's our fabric itself, which we've gotten and paid for the 720. But the freight, however, no vendor and vendor invoices associated, nor any actual cost. So let's imagine that we got the, uh, the fabric quite some time ago, and now we get a freight bill many weeks or months later. So let's put that bill in, back to our accounting and bills and invoices under our accounts payable. Click add, new vendor invoice. And there we go. Now let's take a look at a few things here. Again, we can see the fabric has been received and paid in full because I can see that design manager is automatically recognizing that uh, we've recorded previous vendor invoice or invoices for the fabric itself because the cost to date matches the purchase or estimated cost exactly. And now it's defaulting the quantity on this invoice and cost on this invoice to be zero. Yet, it's still trying to recoup the freight cost. It knows that we've had uh, $40 of freight on the purchase order itself and we've had no cost so far for the freight. So it's defaulting that $40 for us. Let's imagine that Philip Jeffries wasn't even the, the freight company. Let's put in, oh, I don't know, best way as an example. That would not change the purchase order itself. That would still be associated with Philip Jeffries. We're just saying that another bill for that order came in from a third party. So pop some invoice number in there. Today's date is just fine. Transaction description, freight for fabric. There we go. Click OK. Post our vendor invoice. Now, let's go to our existing tab here. Sort that by purchase order number. And we can see, oops. There we go. We can see there's our original deposit. There is our vendor invoice for the fabric, as we can see by my transaction description. And here's our brand new invoice for the freight. So you can have as many vendor invoices on the purchase order as necessary, particularly for shipping charges. And if we dig a bit deeper on our detail here, we can see we're appropriately hitting our freight cost of goods sold account. And we can even see that the component affected was indeed our freight component. And we can see our original purchase order cost versus the uh, cost to date or the actual cost from the vendor invoice itself. So we can tie precisely all charges for freight exactly to components associated for those freights in the project itself.
Okay. What happens in the case where freight's received from the vendor, but it's not itemized? Rather, it's just a lump sum of freight, uh, a lump sum from the freight or the shipping company. What do we do in those cases? Now, let's take a look at that example. So let's add another vendor invoice. And we'll go to Century Furniture here. We've got some furniture from Century. And we can see we have some furniture for our outdoor living area. And in this case, there was no itemization of the freight, just a lump sum, let's say it's $500. Well, I don't really want to go through and put the $500 of freight just on one of the items, the stools, for example. Nor do I want to itemize each one or distribute it myself, even though it wouldn't be that bad in this example. Design Manager can do that for us. So let's go ahead and see how that would happen. Let's put our invoice number in, invoice date, transaction description, furniture, and lump freight. To distribute that freight automatically, we can use our distribute cost button along the right side. And I said the amount was oh, $500. Distribute. To what? Our case is freight, but you could really distribute it to any of the other component types. You could even add on additional charge to merchandise if desired. And then you have the option to add to an existing mount or replace an existing mount. We don't have any freight listed, so of course we'd be adding, but you could replace it if you wanted to update the freight itself. Then you have the option to either distribute the freight evenly. In this case, Design Manager would take that 500 and put the appropriate amount on each of the various um, components here. In this case, 125 for each of the various um, pieces of furniture. Or you can weight it against merchandise or any other fee. So in this case, how the higher the cost of the merchandise for each of the components, the more freight it will get. And if we click OK, let's see how that happens. Design Manager, of course, is going to uh, warn you that you're going to be updating the costs, and there we go. And notice, just like that, our cost on invoice for each one has changed. And it's changed by adding the freight proportionately to the merchandise. So the sofa got a little less freight than the chair, and the bar stools got the most freight, just under 200 while the table got less than 100. So depending on the cost of the merchandise of each of the components, Design Manager distributed that freight for us, a very logical way of distributing one lump sum of freight. Let's go ahead and click OK, and we can post our vendor invoice. And now, let's look at one of those items Go over to our Carter's Beach Home. Let's edit our sofa. We've created this freight component for us. We didn't estimate freight. It was none in, uh, already created in the specifications themselves. And Design Manager even denotes what vendor invoice number and purchase order number from where the freight was coming. But notice there is no estimated cost, and there shouldn't be. We didn't estimate any freight cost. but on our order status tab, we don't have a purchase order because the freight was not included on the purchase order, but we absolutely, absolutely have an entry for our vendor invoice for that 104.17 freight that was associated with the sofa. Now, I always like to point out at this point, we don't need to go and input the actual cost into the estimated cost. In fact, if, if I'm consulting with a client, I tell them that's not it's not efficient way, it's not efficient use of your time. Try to break them of that habit. It's just re-entering the information. Design manager can be configured to charge that actual freight from the vendor invoices for you without having to go back and put the cost in on the estimated component. Speaking of invoicing for freight. Let's move on to that topic. Now, 
When it comes to invoicing, Design Manager has a few options for you, particularly on how you want to calculate the default price of merchandise, freight, etc., for each of your products. What do I mean by that? Well, let's go to one of our project as an example. Let's take a look at the Pennington home, back to defaults and our familiar advanced markup. Go to our invoice tab and let's focus on the pricing selection here. This determines how Design Manager is going to calculate the default invoice price for your merchandise and any of your other component types as well. And you have three different options. First, you have always proposal. What this means is whatever is entered into the specification as the estimated price will be charged to the client. The bills from the vendor don't matter. You can invoice the client prior to receiving the bills. Not a, uh, not a pattern that I suggest, of course, but it could be done. And design manager will just invoice, will use the price of the specification itself. And if the bill comes in higher or lower, it doesn't matter. You're going to bill whatever's typed into the specifications. Now, the opposite of that will be always actual. In this case, Design Manager is going to go out and examine all the vendor invoices for a particular item. And it's going to use the total cost there and mark that up by the appropriate percentage. So if any costs increase from the vendor, well, you'll pass that on to the client. Any decreases will be passed on as well. Finally, you have automatic, and that's going to calculate the always proposal value and the always actual value and take the higher of the two. In that way, Design Manager is configured to charge your client appropriately and never miss billing any of those critical, in our case, freight charges. Now, I do want to point out as well, this only applies the pricing model when you're using markup pricing. If you're using discount off list or the fee structure, as we saw briefly, it's always going to be whatever you recorded in specifications. Only when you're using markup can you have Design Manager evaluate the bills themselves and pass on any charges if desired. Okay. So let's go over to our client invoicing by going to our accounting, client invoices. Let's click add. And again, we'll focus on our Carter's Pennington home. Let's create an invoice for our guest bedroom. So we could put in our transaction description, guest bedroom. We can even narrow our focus by putting in our proposal number for our guest bedroom. And we can see right on our invoice window, we have our merchandise price and our freight price as well. And we can see that comes right from the item window itself. There's our price for the, uh, this, the sofa itself, pardon me, the armchair itself, and the freight as well. But now, let's take a look at the sofa. We're charging $220 of freight. But our specification, our freight component, the estimated price is only $192.50. Why? Well, recall that the bill for the freight came in at $200, not our estimated $175. So that is the amount that we're marking up 10% to calculate our $220. Why? Let's look at our advanced options because we're using the automatic selection for freight. So it evaluated what we have typed in as the estimated price, and it evaluated what we would be using the actual cost for the price and take the higher of the two. And you can see that you also have your various styles for how you want freight to appear on the invoice document itself, which work exactly as they do on the proposal window. So let's tag all. We have all of our items selected. Click OK. And we'll print and accept our invoice. And we can see there's all of our items being listed. And I have the freight set to total. And we can go ahead and accept. Fantastic. Let's do another example. 
let's switch over to our Carter's Brigantine Beach Home. And we can see, uh, as an example, our king bed, there's our $302 of freight, but our stone table here has no freight listed yet. Why? Well, I have no freight being associated with our estimated price, even though I did record that distributed freight, as we saw in our uh, freight distribution example, of $90.28. And yet, I'm still not charging the client any freight for that particular piece. Why? Well, in this case, our freight is set for always proposal. So if we have nothing typed in for the estimated price because it's always proposal, there'll be no price for freight for the client. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of our outdoor living area items. No freight associated. Outdoor merchandise. Click OK. I'm going to do so to prove a few points here or demonstrate a few points. We can see there's all the merchandise and yet no freight associated. Except. And even if it went back in to create another invoice, I don't even see our all of our outdoor living areas. There they are along the bottom, but still no freight. What we could do is go back to our project, edit our Brigantine Beach Home, go to our advanced markup, change our invoice pricing for freight from always proposal to automatic. I'm gonna save that change, and then I'm going to use the update items function. This is going to then recalculate my freight price based upon my new settings. Click OK. Design manager will, of course, warn me as that might be a lengthy process. Not so bad in our case. Now, if we go back to our client invoice window, take a look at our Brigantine Beach Home, one, immediately all of our outdoor living area items reappear. Why? because now Design Manager is trying to recoup our price. So by changing our pricing method or uh, pricing model for our freight and then updating each of the items, Design Manager is saying, okay, based upon your new settings, I do indeed have some freight that we'd like to charge. So let's select these again. I'm gonna change our freight to list, and you'll see why momentarily. Let's do freight for outdoor living. Click OK. And here we can see a few different points simultaneously. One, I'm not re I'm not invoicing again for the merchandise. That's been done already. But I'm invoicing just for the freight. And by using the list, the client can very easily and clearly see the freight portion for all of those particular items. So a few points to remember here. You can have multiple invoices for an item if necessary, particularly for freight charges. And you can change your pricing model, easily update the items to get the price that, uh, for your freight and any other component type, quite honestly, that you want to. And there we go. Now, that whole concept of the uh, always proposal, that's the same, it applies to the always actual model as well. Let's say we're set to always actual, which is looking at the vendor invoices themselves. Well, if I don't have any, um, if I don't have vendor invoices recorded and I do have prices set into my specification under the estimated, still not gonna get any freight because always actual is looking for the vendor invoices and if I have none recorded, well, there's zero cost to mark up, I'll be invoicing the client for zero. 
So it, understanding invoice pricing is very important, obviously. So when you have time, if you haven't done so before, review our accounting course too, client invoices and billing reports. And again, I will go over these concepts in great detail under that particular discussion. That brings us to um, some reports that we can use to help monitor and track our freight. Two of great note. Let's go to our project reports. And I'm gonna focus first on the profit analysis, one of my uh, most used reports. So I would obviously add that to my favorites for easy access. And I'm gonna change the selection to by location and I'm gonna run it for all of my projects. Remember, by leaving your ranges blank, that tells design manager to run it for all. You only want to use a range if you're trying to narrow the focus of a report. And here we go. Let's make this a bit larger. And we can see we have our Carter's Pennington home, grouping the items and displaying them within their respective locations. And we can see some very familiar um, values now. We have our cost, both our estimate and our actual listed. The estimate, again, as we've said many times now, is what we type into our specification window itself. What cost do we put in on the component window? And yet our actual costs come from the vendor invoice themselves. So back to our sofa and pillow example, we had estimated cost of 875, but our freight changed. So we updated those costs. That's why our actual value is different than our estimated value. And same for our pricing. We have our estimated price, what we type into the specification, specifications window, the estimated price on the component, compared against our actual price. That gets recorded when we invoice the client. So we actually invoice the client more for our sofa because our price increased. Same with the pillows. And from there, we have our estimated and actual profit, which is the difference between the uh, corresponding price and cost. And then we have columns for our estimated gross profit and our estimated markup. So at the end of the project or during the project's um, development, we can keep track of, hey, are we hitting our target markup percentages? And if not, this report itself can tell us why. And you can even see there's a project summation at the bottom that'll show the entire project for us. Very convenient for project cost analysis at the end of the project. Another report is our freight analysis. Now, the freight analysis allows us to review only particular component types exclude including merchandise but we could use any of them we always default to freight as that's the most common one to have uh, the most need for analysis and the report itself is very similar to the profit analysis but we simplify it and we're only focusing on a particular component type so here we can use this window to see each of the items and very conveniently monitor our estimated cost and price for our freight and the actual values as well. So when we're trying to review at the end of a project or perhaps every quarter or uh, every half year or yearly, are we charging enough for freight? Are we estimating freight properly? Uh, should we use fee percentages for freight to uh, calculate those types of things? So this report takes the merchandise out so you can really focus on various component types Freight is our example, but you could do the same for labor or installation or those types of things to ensure that you're making the proper margins on those figures and that you're properly invoicing the client, even if you're just passing along the costs themselves. And with that, that brings us to the end of our discussion today, um, where we discussed a variety of ways of managing freight in Design Manager. We talked about inputting freight into specifications, projecting freight, as a percentage of the cost of merchandise. We showed how to include freight on our proposals, our invoices and purchase orders if desired, and the flexibility of doing so. We show how freight is invoiced to the client and how you can change how it's calculated 
uh, for the default pricing to the client. And we even use the profit analysis and freight analysis reports to really track and monitor our freight. And with that, I thank you all for joining the discussion today, and I hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.